I was five years old and my mother was a professor of music at a college and it was an opera Dido and Aeneas and she was playing the sorceress and they needed some little angels to pray over a body <laughs> and so they recruited children from the kindergarten and because I was in kindergarten I was, we call it nepotism, I was asked to play the part of a little angel and so I got to stay up very late past my bedtime, wear red lipstick and a white angel costume and when I was on stage and the, I did not realize the lights would go off in the house and the, the stage lights would be so bright, it was so thrilling to me mm. and a little bit terrifying but in a good way and to see my mother dressed as a witch and singing in a mezzo-soprano voice and it was the most dramatic thing I'd ever experienced and I think I blame it all on that moment. Oh my gosh, that's really, that's just great. What a great Please. thing you have gone through. In feature films, you might shoot three pages a day. So if you haven't learned your lines by the time you get to the set, which of course would never happen with A or me, <laughs> but if you haven't learned your lines, you can pretty much, you know, learn them as you're eating your breakfast. Mm. In television, especially soap operas like Santa Barbara, oh my God, it's so fast. Mm -hmm. You have to know your lines. You cannot wing it. I had been um, I had been doing a, a soap in New York yes. called Guiding Light, mm -hmm. and uh, I was at the end of my two-year contract, and I thought I don't want to do any more soaps. Mm -hmm. I want to see what else is out there for acting, and then L.A. called. And, and they said, we're interested in having you audition for this. And I went, okay, because I thought, oh, I've always wanted to see California and maybe live there a little bit. And so I flew out and auditioned and I flew home and they said, okay, you got the job. Can you be here tomorrow? And I, so I packed up all my stuff, put it in storage, flew to Los Angeles and, um, and I never went back. I mean, I had to go back to take my stuff out of storage. And, but I, that was it. I, it changed the whole trajectory of my life. I never meant to move here for good, but here I am. Wow. No, they told me before I read it in the script. So the, our executive producer called me into her office and she said, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're dying. And I thought, oh, wow, that's surprising. <laughs> and, um, and I said, okay, how long have I got? And she said, well, Tuesday. Oh, God. And I went, wow, okay, well, uh, I hope at least I have a memorable death. And she said, oh, yeah, <laughs> yes. And she was right. And I, I had mixed feelings about it. Um, once the shock subsided, I was, um, my best friend at the time was actually dying of AIDS. And that, I think, gave me such a different perspective that I was unable to just think, you know, oh my God, this is a tragedy for me. Well, yes and no not compared to a real life tragedy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and then the other part of it was that in my career as an actor, I've always really loved working, but I've never had a really long-term job. And I always feel kind of itchy after about a year. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be my own rhythm. So I've done a lot of television shows that have only lasted one season. And that always kind of suits me. It feels like the right thing. And so I thought, well, I had a really good year on the show and I get a really dramatic death. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you return after many episodes um, for they, short time for two episodes. 
Yes, they said to me afterwards, because I think they underestimated how popular the character was, and because she was in love with Lane, who's everybody's favorite, and the audience was looking to have a wedding, and to be deprived of a wedding, and it was so shocking, they, I think they underestimated the audience response. And so they asked me to come back as, you know, like another character. Sure. And I said, well, I'm dead. And they said, well, you could be your twin, or there's ways around death. But I said, you know, I think that, I think, I think I'm supposed to move on. I think that it's a sign, if you will, that I'm supposed to move on. And they said, well, then will you just come back for a few episodes as an angel? And I said, of course. I, I, I had a habit of, and I still do it. I, you know, just process. Yeah, I just write out everything with my hand. Mm. So I take what is a, a type, a, a typed paper that comes out of a computer, a piece of technology, and I write it in my own hands, and the process of just even that mo movement puts it into my body, mm. and it has a little bit of an alchemical effect. And then I, mm. I always had the habit of I would either run or swim, and I would, have, I would write on these little note cards, and I would do them as I was taking a walk, or walking the dog, or swimming, or if I was on where, and I still do it to this day. And many years later, I read something that neuroscience has determined that the best way to memorize something is to do back and forth, side to side movement with your body while you're learning. And I had discovered this accidentally, oh just, to, just to save time. And so that was, um, that's how I've always done it. And, and it's almost to the point where I feel if I have not written down my lines, I can't do it. Wow. Wow. I didn't know that. And one other thing, sure. the more you do it, the better you get. It's mm. like muscles. It is, it's a muscle. Right. Yeah. Speed, again, yeah. and money. Mm. Money. Money. So nighttime TV, more money. So for a pilot episode, I don't know how many millions of dollars they have in their budget to do the first hour or two hours of a, of a long-running series. In daytime, whatever the budget is, it's a fraction of that, and you, you shoot it in one day. You don't shoot it in 10 days, you shoot it in one day. <laughs> yep. Hard to believe, but you do. Um, yeah, that's the main difference. They're not very famous. Um, they're famous among my family and friends. Um, uh, I have. Mm, I wrote four books that are about one character. So, and they're murder mysteries. Mm -hmm. Then I wrote one book that is um, a paranormal murder mystery. So it has to do with vampires and shapeshifters. And then I've written many short stories. And I'm working right now on my sixth novel, which is different from everything else. Mm. Um, they've been translated. I think the closest they would come to Azerbaijan is they've been translated into Serbian, some of them, um, and also Japanese. But I don't think that's very close to you geographically. Mm. So um, uh, yeah, it's just it's another part of me. I would say uh, Parenthood was pretty famous. Um, and I had a nice part in Parenthood. I played Steve Martin's sister, and I was married to Rick Moranis. And so that was pretty exciting. Um, and I had a very small part in a very big movie, When Harry Met Sally. You were unforgettable. I was unforgettable because the other characters talked about me. My part was very small. But it seemed big because my character had such an impact on the life of the Billy Crystal, right. who played Harry. Right. 
And um, yeah, so that, that was pretty funny. Then I did a, a, a scary one called Arachnophobia, which is a good Halloween movie, especially if you're afraid of spiders. <laughs>